So where shall we begin? <laughs> Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. This is very exciting. We all get to share this together uh, here. Uh, big night for us. We've been working so hard on this for four years now. We were shooting and uh, editing forever. It seemed like we were going to edit uh, um, for the rest of our natural born lives. Uh, fortunately, Tom gave us the opportunity to have a deadline uh, and, uh, and, and to finish, at least have a finish line. Um, the film is actually not completely done and you know, I'm going to take what I learned here uh, in Toronto back. I know my editors are cringing right now. <laughs> but I'm going to take uh, some of this back with us to Los Angeles and, and try to improve the film if we can. Um, clarify things and to make it even better for the official release. Uh, uh, but this was really magical and I'm, I'm so glad that all you guys came here and uh, uh, were a part of this tonight. So thank you. Thank you, thank you. I would like to, um, to ask, there are some people who worked on the film very hard here tonight. There's Daniel over there, he's filming. Stand up for this, Daniel. <laughs> Stephanie uh, is here. Stephanie, where are you? There's Stephanie. Stephanie. Uh, Shelby, did she make it tonight? Did she, oh, Shelby's right there. Wow, I never, I didn't know you, I didn't know you had a change of clothes. I thought you always wore the same thing. She, uh, uh, we had her, no, 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 stay standing for a minute. This is my chance to embarrass you. These, these uh, three people worked incessantly. They, 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 they put their lives and their hearts and their souls into this, and they had to put up with Bartholomew Cubbins uh, uh, torturing them day in, day out, and they really helped make this into a film, not just a, a mess of uh, one scene after another. So give them a big round of applause. Uh, And uh, Jamie the chest is here somewhere. Where is Jamie? The, the chest is over here, of course, halfway on stage where he wants to be. He really uh, helped with all the music and um, was a was a was a great help. And and of course Shannon here. Uh, uh, am I forgetting anybody else? To oh, Tomo, Tomo, who? Who? Yeah. I can't hear you. Yeah. You gotta speak English. Yeah. Oh, of course. Oh, Emma. Yeah. <laughs> Emma, who, you know, worked harder than all of us combined on the movie. She's, she, we've been working together for seven years and has uh, always been my bigger and better brain and uh, done such a phenomenal job making this into the film that it is. She started as my assistant and now is the producer and uh, a partner for me in many things and she deserves a big cheer uh, and applause. So. You. Um, does anybody have any questions at all? Do we have, oh, there's a couple of questions. Yes, you want to pick, Tom? You want me to pick? Yeah, uh, you can right pick. here, we'll start with you, sir. So, are you guys gonna pursue crowdfunding? Are we gonna pursue, uh, pursue crowdfunding? What's an interesting thing to talk about, because crowdfunding actually, uh, I mean, sure it existed in some form or another, but no one had ever kickstarted an album, even a few years ago when we made this, so it's incredible how much technology has changed, and as some people talked about in the film, uh, uh, it's incredible what technology has done. It's creating a more transparent system. It's creating the ability for us to deal directly with you without having a negotiator in between, a middleman who often makes that experience dreadful so that we can talk to each other and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. And you can say, yeah, it sounds terrible, or else, yeah, that sounds pretty fun. I, I want a little piece of that. Uh, so, uh, crowdsourcing, crowdfunding, I think is a really, really interesting thing. And, and with platforms like uh, Vert as well, there are a lot of possibilities in the future um, to distribute your work as an artist directly to people out there um, without uh, the bullshit. Yeah. So, uh, take a question back there in the corner. Yes, you standing up. Yes. 
Just scream it out as loud as you can. I wish they took 25%. They'd take more like 125%. Uh, but she's talking about ASCAP, and, uh, and, and in the States we have BMI as well. And those are people who are, uh, it's so confusing to talk about the record business, and it really doesn't have to be. That's one thing that needs to be fixed. But uh, this was really a, largely a, a, a fight about uh, the sale of our records, um, the sale of recorded music. That's what the record business is about. Some of that other stuff is on the publishing side. Uh, uh, and that's a different uh, battle entirely. Artifact part two. <laughs> Jared, I have a question. Do, do you think the, that EMI and the, the record business have kind of come to terms with you making this movie, or do you think this movie makes anyone <laughs> nervous? Well, there are some people from EMI here. <laughs> Hold on. This is Canada, we're nice here. Uh, but there are some people who are brave enough to come from a Canadian label and I do want to make it clear that we aren't anti-record company, we're not anti-company, we are anti-greed, we're anti-corruption. That's the point of the film, that we all deserve to be treated fairly and I mean it's so funny because I'm sure there are people here that I always thought that, you know, we're in a band, those guys are filthy rich, they're making so much money, and, you know, that we're not doing this for money, we never did it for money, we did it for love, and the same reason that a lot of you are doing it for as well. But, but my point is that a lot of the people at the, most of the people at the record company uh, are really great people. They are people who help bands realize their goals and dreams around the world, it's those few people at the top that are keeping in place a system that screws the artist and a lot of times actually screws the employee rather than rewarding everybody for success. And that's a corporate problem. That's not just a record business problem. So, you know, I I'm curious to talk to the people from EMI. Where are you guys? Are you here? Oh, they're right there, hiding. They're right in the middle. <laughs> Woo! Is it as bad as you thought? It, they're not shaking their head, no. Um, anyway, but these, these three people in particular have been um, really allies for us. And as you can see, we interviewed quite a few people in the movie. Uh, some of them still worked in EMI when we interviewed them, and they either, either lost their jobs or were fired or, or just left uh, on their own free will. Um, but it's a challenging situation, and I think that a lot of people in the film were really eager to tell their story uh, and everybody knows what's going on. It's not a perfect system, and, and uh, you know, understanding helps helps it get better. Shannon, I'd love to hear from you. Like, you know, as you watch this and revisit this time in your life, uh -oh. <laughs> what what is, what is watching the movie you know, bring to mind for you? Just the fight, the struggle. The, I mean, trying to create and trying to uh, you know, you know, share something that's coming from your soul, and that you know, being interrupted by this monster, you know what I mean, is, is kind of annoying. And it's hard to do, it's very really challenging. It was, but, a, it was but, brutal for, yeah. I mean, all of us. We, we, everybody that was a part of the making of the record was impacted uh, in a really deep way. I tried to take the burden myself because I handle a lot of the day in, day out business of the band. Um, uh, but it, it creeped in. As you can see, there's that one scene where Shannon and I get in a fight, and uh, not really a fight, there's another scene that we could have had in there. That was, <laughs> save that for the, the DVD. Uh, yeah, that was a good one. There, there, there was some slamming doors and stuff around there. Some beard pulling. Um, <laughs> the old Louisiana beard pull. Uh, uh, I don't on my sleeves now, get ready. <laughs> I almost cut the scene out um, a week before this uh, Toronto of, the, of my brother and I getting into that little argument because I thought the film is so filled with conflict. Why add another scene? But I kept it in um, uh, because I, you know, I was listening to um, you know, the people, the editors that are working so hard on this and everyone kind of thought that it was important to have, see how the band was affected. Anyone else have a question?
Yeah, we, we've got time for a couple of, let's take a question from someone who's oh, traveling we got all really the time far. you need. <laughs> we got a midnight movie to get in yeah, here. Who's Never traveled mind. far and wide? Who's traveled far? You gotta tell us where you... Everybody's traveled you? far. Okay, this, this, this lady is standing up. Tell us where you traveled from. From Turkey. Tur okay, who's here, who's here from farther than Turkey? Who's got Turkey? It's pretty far, bud. Okay. Chicago. <laughs> oh, Australia. Okay, we'll Bondi Beach? Next. First turkey, first turkey. <laughs> Question from Turkey. Um, I, first of all, I was just eating straight there. Um, You're welcome. It really helped me get through my bad time. And when I watched the movie, I was really shocked because you were really stressed and depressed. And I'm so depressed about what happened throughout the whole movie. And I was wondering what gave you the strength to get through all the problems. The question from Turkey is, is how did you get through all the, these stressful times? I mean, for me, it was just sticking close to, uh, you know, my family, Jared, you know. I mean, as cheesy as that sounds, but it's true. You know, we share the same uh, goal, and, and he was, like he said, and, and I agree, he was the front runner in the whole thing and dealt with everything on the front line, so... I, you know, I just stuck, stuck by his side. I think that we had a, a real, there's no fight like the fight of the just. And we felt like we had a great reason to go to war. Um, if there is ever a great reason, I don't know. But certainly if there, if there is a great reason, this was a great reason. Uh, we were out for the truth. And we had lots of days of doubt. And you hear and feel some of it uh, in the film. Uh, but we kept putting one foot in front of the other and marching forward no matter what, and that's what you gotta do if you are in the business of making your dreams your reality. Let's, where's Australia? Where's Australia? Um, do you feel like... <laughs> we'll get to Toronto. <laughs> do you feel like there's a sense of relief now that the film has been obviously shown, or do you feel like you've only won a battle and you're still fighting the war? There's so many more battles. There's so many more, you know. I think there's a lot of improvement um, in front of us as well. I think there, there's, it's, we didn't re-sign a, a perfect deal, but you can always keep fighting too. There's, that, there's a quote, I can't, I, didn't, I can't remember if it, if it made it in this cut. Um, he who knows when to fight yeah. and when to make peace yeah. is ultimately the victorious, right? Yeah. And, You've got to, and I like what Flood said, who, who, you know, you would have thought that Flood would say, you know, go independent, you know, sell your record on the beach in Venice, you know, and with a ukulele in one hand and, a, you know, whatever, because um, he's really independent minded, but his advice weighed heavy on me, is fight it from the inside, and, and, and sometimes you can change a lot without necessarily uh, too much of a, 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 an obvious confrontation. Uh, I think this film is, in a way, a continuation of the battle. I hope that artists, I hope people at the label watch the film, and rather than cursing my name, um, they go, hmm, maybe there's a point there, and maybe we can all be really profitable, have a great company, and leave everyone feeling like they're being treated fairly, because I think you can do that. I think you can run companies and have customers and employees be really happy about their relationship. So, right, let's take a question from Toronto. He's got... Okay. <laughs> the loud one, the loud one. A drunk question from Toronto. Thank you. <laughs> Get ready, everybody. It's one of them. going for all the extroverts here, but uh, <laughs> hey, they're the ones that make themselves hurt and seen. You go for it. Okay, the guy who looks like he's in a straight jacket. Uh, <laughs> here you go. Uh, as a, uh, a hopeful uh, artist, an emerging artist, an established artist, um, what kind of 
advice would you give to uh, a music group that would love to uh, have some level of su success but avoid the crap balls that come with you know signing an early deal? Like you know, we handed you a CD earlier, and we really just want to we want to find out like how do we avoid going through those types of struggles and still find some measure of success? Advice to emerging advice. artists. Yeah. Like, well. I Sure. I, I would say this, do as much as you can on your own and make an album yourself. You have no excuse not to share your music with the world. There are all kinds of platforms out there. Um, shoot videos yourself, you can do it with a fucking iPhone, you know. <laughs> do it yourself as much as you can, as long as you can. Build your audience as much as you can, as long as you can. Then you'll have more power, you'll have more control, and you'll make a better deal. And you'll grow your band and be better at what you do. I think a lot of people rush a deal. It used to be when we signed back in the